Right, floating point. <coughs> they will, in general, always use two's complement for the mantissa and the exponent. Okay, so the mantissa is the value of the number, the detail of it. So that is the number detail. And the exponent is the size of it. Okay, but they're in two's complement. So all the rules for when you're messing with two's complement still factor in. You only start flipping and adding if you've got something that you want to write down as negative or you've got a negative number that you can't read. Don't just say, oh, it's two's complement, flip, flip and add. Because that's going to go horrendously wrong. Okay, the simple questions will ask you what the exponent controls, how many bits. So the more bits, the larger the range of numbers you can represent. So the bigger they can be or the smaller they can be. Okay, if you wanted to do um, the weight of an electron, oh God, which is what, 10 to the minus 31 or something? Something like that, it's quite small. It doesn't weigh much, you could get a few in your bag. You've probably got a few in your bag, actually, haven't you? A few electrons. So that's 10 to the minus 31. So if we wanted to represent 10 to the minus 31, how many bits to represent 31? We're, to, we're talking 2 to the 31, which is different. Just to represent the value 31, minus 31. Oh, minus 31. Um, six. Yeah, this five. Five. Yeah. Okay, so the range matters. In um, standard floating point, we have eight bits. <laughs> so a 32 bit floating point value has eight, eight bits for the exponent. So you can do two to the minus one. <coughs> two to the minus 128. Can remember, two's complement eight bits. These little range questions, they'll come back to haunt you, synoptic testing and all that. So 2 to the minus 128, and the biggest, 127. Okay. So that, the exponent is purely about the range of numbers you can represent. Right. So even with 8 bits, you get a massive range of numbers. It's just purely range. Right, the mantissa, as we were discussing the other day. What's my hand? Precision or accuracy? <laughs> accuracy seems to be what they keep saying, don't yeah. they? Yeah. All right. What's the difference between the so, two? <laughs> the more bits we use, the more detail we can represent. So it is accuracy, really, isn't it? Okay. Okay, so let's have a look at. An example of doing this. Let's have a look at a few examples. So let's say, let's do the easy one, which is looking at some inflating point and converting it back, because that's the easy one. All right, so let's have a, a nice, simple format. We'll have six bits for the mantissa. And you'll notice from the questions, they pick some really random, ridiculously short, useless formats. And we'll have four bits for the exponent. Okay, so I'm just going to write that down. I want you to tell me something about this number when I write it down. I'll put the dot in, but remember they don't have to put the dot in. That's just implied, but I'll put it in. Alright, so that's the binary point. Implied binary, I'm going to put an arrow there. Implied binary point. But it's not really there. It's just in your imagination. Okay, so if you like close your eyes and see dots, not there. You know you get those uh, white, white flashes in your eyes, if you squeeze your eyes really tight. Yeah. Yeah, when you've been shaking your head or something. We do this and Oh, here we go, here it counts up wrong. Uh, yeah, that looks, that's six. Right. What can you tell me about that floating point number without even knowing what the number is? Let's go. Here. Yeah. Right, hang on. <laughs> Something that's quite important. It's a technical word. It's not normal. 
A excellent mirror. Not normalized. How do you know it's not normalized? Because there's no zero and one or one and zero as opposed to The first two bits are the same, so it's not normalized. Why is that important? Why is normalization important? It makes multiplication easier. Not. It's making sure, and this is where that other word comes in, that we're representing the number as precisely as possible using the number of bits we've got. Okay. We're wasting, these are leading zeros, they don't have any significance. We're wasting positions, bit positions that can represent more detail. Okay. So we normalise so that we can hold it as precise as possible or as accurately as possible. We're making use of the bit format we've got. Okay, so this isn't, this isn't normalized. Right, in order to convert this, we're going to take this and transform it. We're not going to mess about with it first, we're going to do it the, the dumb, dumb easy way. But we have to look at the exponent. Now looking at the exponent, it's in two's complement, remember? What can you tell me about the exponent? Negative. It's definitely negative. This is the easiest negative number in the world, because it's minus one. All the ones is minus one, no matter how many bits. Okay, so that is minus one. Right. This number, is it going to get bigger, or is it going to get smaller? smaller. It's going to get smaller because the exponent's negative. That means that the binary point is going to go that way. Right, so I'm going to write down the number again. And I'm going to put a load of leading zeros, so I don't change the sign of it, that's important. And I'm going to move it one position that way, the binary point. So that represents one, two, four, but this represents half. <laughs> God, that is my brain getting eight. No, I've done it. I'll get on with the next one. Well, my brain is all done. 16, 32, and a 64. Okay, so we've actually got the number is 3 32 If that's that's a word, 32. When they ask you for the answer, unless they say as a decimal fraction, just leave it as that. Okay, you've got your calculator, so if you want it to be like, like you know. Oh, I am the man, and I can write all these in decimal, even though I'm a calculator just in the just exam. Brackets? Well, I what? Let's put the load two and put the decimal equivalent in brackets. You're going to write decimal equivalent? Yeah, just in case. So I'll write the actual number next to it. Are you going to put a quid or equivalent? <laughs> equivalent? Why is decimal equivalent? Uh, After giving it all that mirror? <laughs> 0 0.09375. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> right. I would suggest if it doesn't ask you to, leave it like that. Because if you start like doing 3 divided by 32 on the calculator, I know what you like. You'll do 33, not watch, and just put any old rubbish down. Alright, so unless it asks, keep it simple. Right, so doing it that way, that's quite straightforward. Okay? Right, the harder bit. Oh, no, let's, let's carry this one on. <coughs> Let's normalise this. Because I might ask you to do that. Right, so we want to adjust this number so the first two bits are different. Okay? So I need to get rid of these leading zeros. So I'm gonna, and you've got to be very careful, so let's say that started at minus one. If we move the binary point, the implied binary point, one way, two ways. Okay, so it's there, so that this number then becomes 2. How much do we need to adjust this by? We need to adjust by 2 because I've moved the binary point. Change that to minus 3. Is everyone happy with that? Because we've actually made that bigger, haven't we, by doing that. So this needs to adjust it to go back the other way too. So we need to write minus 3. Let's do a 2's complement recap. Okay. Can't write minus 3 directly, because we're stupid. So we're going to write down what 3 is. Then we're going to use 2's complement. Remember, and all that really does is just multiply by minus 1. Okay, so we're going to flip all the bits. 
and then we're going to look for the first zero on the right hand side so we can add one. So our exponent becomes that. So normalising that number gives us that. They might ask us to do that, so don't forget about that. Okay. When you're actually doing arithmetic with float point numbers, you have to mess about with the exponents and everything when they're normalised because you need them, if you're like adding them together, you want the columns in the same place. Okay, so there's various things you can do. Okay, let's have a go at doing a decimal number. I'll, we'll do an easy one. Using the same format, let's try and do four. Let's do four. Okay, the number four. Right. So don't worry about exponents or anything I have to start with. Let's write down what 4 is in binary. So I'm going to put a leading 0 because I want it to be positive. Everything's 2 to complement. So 4 would look like that. Right. That gives me an implied point there, doesn't it? Because that's our 1, 2, 4, oops, this is the capital 2, half and quarter. Okay? But obviously, we can't represent 4, we've got to shift it. So we need to keep track, okay? We're now going to make this number smaller because we want the binary point to move so that we've got a number less than one. So we're going to move it one, two, three. So we'll end up with little point one, that. Right, we've moved it three. So we've made it smaller by three bit positions. So what do we need, what sign do we need the exponent to be? Plus three. Plus three. Plus three. Yeah? So that's our number in floating point, in this format of floating point. Okay? Check it. And you've got time, you've got two hour exam, nobody took two hours to do that exam. You've got time to check these things. Work it backwards. Do it backwards. So we know that's three plus three. So we're going to move, we're going to make this bigger, so the point's going to go this way when we take it back. So we're going to go one, two, three. So we're going to put the point there, that gives us a one, two, four. Yes. It's still four. Okay? As simple as that. The other things that they might ask you, and they might ask you in a weird way, but they'll be asking the question, what's the biggest and smallest number you can represent? So the largest positive number we can represent with this format, normalised, is going to be count on two, three, four, five, that, and the biggest exponent is going to be that. <coughs> okay. The largest negative number is going to be what? One, two, one, two, 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 zero, zero, zero. What's the exponent going to be? Oh yeah. Hang on, I'm going to cut that up. <laughs> Same. Same. Don't. We're not saying, if you go and change that to minus 8, you're making a very small negative number, aren't you? Okay, be careful. The smallest value you can represent, there's a good question. What's the smallest value, positive value? Something worry about the size. What would we put? If it's got to be normalised. One. Right, if it's got to be normalised, it's got to have a one there. Yes. Hang on, one, two, three, that's four, isn't it? Um, right, well, it's going to be that, isn't it? Yeah? Biggest negative exponent we can have, which is minus 8, in this format. And because it, it's normalised, it's got to be that. But how can we represent a smaller number? Yeah, unnormalise it. If we had it unnormalised and did that, 
We'd be making it a bit smaller, wouldn't we? That's all there is to floating point. If we do some uh, practice, I haven't got the video on this, but if we do some